we continue to hear from the 13th chapter of Matthew in our gospel for this weekend. And so we continue to hear about a series of parables that Jesus is telling. Today we have three parables, but the most prominent one being the parable of the wheat and the weeds, one that begins our passage today and one that Jesus then explains and breaks down for the disciples as well. In this parable of the wheat and the weeds, we see this contrast, these two ways. And it's a theme that we hear throughout Matthew's gospel. We see it, for example, in chapter 25, where we have parables about judgment and the kingdom there as well. And we hear about the two sets of virgins. One set was wise and had oil for their lamp, so that when the bridegroom came, they had light whereas the other group did not. They were foolish virgins. And then, of course, the most famous passage of all, probably, in Matthew's Gospel, or one of them, is that parable between the sheep and the goats, this great separation between the sheep and the goats, the sheep who will inherit eternal life, the goats who will enter into eternal damnation. And so these two ways are very important for Jesus, very important in Matthew's Gospel. Because there really are ultimately only two ways, heaven or hell. So we're on that journey either toward heaven or on that journey toward hell. And the reason why Jesus preaches about that over and over again so often is because so often we resist that idea. We want there to be a middle ground. We want there to be some way in between. And in fact, what we see much of our lives, what we see on earth is that there is much in between that the wheat and the weeds aren't so clear, that good and evil isn't always clear cut. And we find that so often with other people as well, as well as ourselves, that separation is not always clear. In fact, the parable points to this reality as well, that whenever the wheat and the weeds grow together, not only do they grow together, that makes it difficult to separate them, but also the Bible scholars tell us that the weed that Jesus speaking about, called Darnell, is in fact a weed that looks very much like wheat. So if you saw them growing together, it wouldn't be clear which was the wheat and the weed. And that's an important point to make, because while sometimes we may feel like we know who the good people are and the bad people are, who the wheat and the weeds are, it is usually not quite as clear. And we had a tragic example of that with a prominent Catholic who was in the news recently. His name was Jean Vanier. He died back in 2019. And when he did, he had died pretty much as a living saint. For years, people had considered him such a holy man because he was originally from Canada. He had moved to eventually to France, where he started uh, the Larche communities, which were communities where those who had developmental disabilities lived with those who didn't, and they shared life together. In fact, they shared friendship together, that they lived together. And in doing so, that really formed bonds between them and, of course, was very powerful for everybody involved. And these communities that started with him and, and a few disabled people eventually grew into 37 countries and 150 different homes that continue to exist throughout the world today. So they're powerful communities, and that's why that for much of his life, much of the last part of his life, he was considered basically a living saint, much like Mother Teresa for so much of her years was considered a living saint. For so many, Jean Vanier was believed that as well, especially in Canada and Europe, where he was especially well known. And yet, tragically, in February of this past year, right before coronavirus kind of took over the news and everything changed with that going on, there was released a report by the large communities themselves, which said after, you know, a study that they had done, they found that John Vanier had done some very evil thing, that in fact, with at least six different women over the course of 35 years, he had engaged in forms of spiritual direction with them, but in doing so, he used that to manipulate them into sexual relationships with him. 
This included both lay women as well as, as even nuns. In doing so, he actually had learned this from a priest mentor that had also engaged in this type of behavior uh, as well. So here we have this portrait of Jean Vanier, these two different sides. For those who were disabled, he did so many good things, so many beautiful things. And yet for these six women at least, and maybe others, that he engaged in this behavior which was, which was evil, which in so many ways was damaging to them. So which was John Vanier? Was he, is he wheat or is he weed? Is he in heaven or in hell? Only God knows the answer to that question at this point. We pray that he repented from his evil deeds and maybe he'll make it to heaven after significant time in purgatory. But the fact remains that it's up to God to judge hearts, that even when it seems like we can tell who's good and who's evil, we don't always know the heart of the person. We heard that in our second reading today from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, which we only heard two verses from, and yet they were very powerful, because they reminded us that it's the Holy Spirit who comes to the aid of our weakness, and that it's the Holy Spirit who leads us to judgment of hearts. So we recognize, we must recognize our weakness, our sinfulness, that we have not yet been selected as wheat or as weeds, that we are in the process. But Jesus comes to tell us that we must make it our central duty of our lives to become the wheat, to become children of the kingdom, to give our whole lives over to Christ, to not live bifurcated lives where, okay, we do some good things over here and then some bad things on the other side. No, we must give our whole lives to Christ and be wholly transformed by the power of his love by the power of the Spirit coming to us. And so again, going back to that reading from St. Paul today, he tells us that the Spirit is the one who comes to transform us. That there's times in life when we experience those inexpressible groanings, which has always been a powerful phrase for me, a powerful thought, because that happens to us in our lives. We groan out over evil. We groan out over what, when finding out about Jean Vanier, that's something that makes us groan out for this man who lived a double life in many ways. Likewise, the violence that we see you know, on our TV, in our news, in our neighborhoods, cause us to cry out. Those external things, the sickness, the sadness, the COVID, all that causes us to, to groan out toward the Lord. Of course, sometimes it's our own sinfulness that makes us groan out. That we groan out when we can't believe that we've done that same thing over again that sin that we can't seem to, to shake, that thing that just, that bad habit, habitual sin that we repeat over and over again, that can cause us to groan out. Well, St. Paul tells us the Spirit comes to our aid. He intercedes for us. He comes to us in our groaning. And it shows us that those groanings are, in fact, a prayer, an honest groan to the Lord to say, Lord, I can't handle this on my own. I don't know how to deal with the evil in the world. I don't know how, how to deal with the evil of my own heart. So I need your spirit to come and transform it, to give me peace, to give me hope. St. Paul tells us the spirit comes to intercede for us in that prayer. And so we must turn our lives over to the spirit fully and completely, to the God who searches the hearts. We must be people of deep and honest prayer, which also means being people of deep and honest humility, and honesty to look at our whole lives and to, to not to justify those evils, those sins, those failures that we've been doing because, okay, I do some good things over here, so it doesn't really matter what these other things that I do on the side. No, that our whole lives will go before the judgment seat of Christ. Our whole lives will be judged. And it's only by giving over those weaknesses, those sins to the Lord that we can be transformed to make a life as a follower of Jesus, as a true opportunity to be a child of, of the kingdom. So we must be people of honest prayer. We must be people of humility and truth to go to the Lord in our groanings, that the Spirit can teach us to pray, can intercede for us, and can transform our hearts in everything that God wants to do in our lives and in our hearts. So we all groan out that we may become wheat, that we may become the true children of the kingdom. We also groan out that we can lead others 
to that same reality. We can help them to see, in humility and honesty, their need for God and their need for the Spirit of God to come and intercede for them. Because none of us desires to be thrown into the fiery furnace. But to do so, we must empty ourselves of all that is dark and sinful and be transformed by the light of Christ. Because then, as Jesus tells us, we'll have the opportunity to shine like the sun, to be righteous in the kingdom of heaven. And this is the good news that we reflect on today. So whoever has ears ought to hear.